Long ago, there existed a world. A world different from what the people on these islands think of. This world was incredibly big. More people lived on this world than there were grains of sand on these nowhere islands. I know it may be hard to imagine, but such a world once existed. At some point, the world wound up destroyed. Naturally, it was humans who destroyed it. In the back of their minds, everyone had an inkling that it would happen at some point. And then it really did happen. And so, the world is no more. Just before the end of the world, a white ship came to these islands. On it, all the people of Tasmili Village. Yes, aboard the white ship were those few who had managed to escape the world. The people on the ship still went by their names from the previous world. This white ship plan had been set in place before the world was destroyed. And although they're part of the world, the Nowhere Islands is a special place. They were the ones that would remain even if the world was lost. The one and only place where people could survive. And so the white ship arrived on these islands. Now, the reason these islands are special is because they harbor a giant dragon nearly as large as the islands themselves. Long, long ago, people lived together with the dragon. However, at some point in time, the people and the dragon could no longer coexist. So, using seven needles, the dragon was placed into a long, long sleep by the ancestors of the Mad Gypsy people, who have lived here since ancient times. Ever since then, the Mad Gypsies have guarded the needles in an effort to prevent the dragon from being woken until its power is truly needed. Thus, until this time of its awakening, the dragon continued to sleep, as the power of the earth itself. And so, because of the tremendous energy of the dragon hidden deep below, these islands were protected from the end of the world. Those who came here aboard the white ship feared another end of the world more than anything else. They felt the world's destruction was a direct result from the way they had lived. The people of the white ship discussed things at great length. They shared their wisdom and spoke with grave seriousness and they arrived at their conclusion. They decided to completely erase everyone's memories of the previous world and start their lives over with new roles and new rules. Yes, in short, everyone would play out the ideal story they had come up with. This is what happened. The people would restart their lives in a simple, peaceful village in the kind of place they wished they had grown up in. They would erase their memory of everything their world, their belongings, their rules, and then they would begin their new lives. Everyone's old memories would be reset and replaced with their newly created story. And thus, the village of Tasmili came to be. However, it was necessary to record the fact that the memory replacement had taken place. The hummingbird egg was the device used to store the memories of the white ship people. Wes and his son Duster, both playing the roles of thieves, were set to take action should a dangerous situation occur. Remember when they went to Osohe Castle? They went there to retrieve the secret of the people of the White Ship. And there's one other thing. Me. It was essential that one person retain memory of the previous world to sort of keep watch over things. I was the only one in the village of Tasmili who wasn't given a role in the new story. The sound of my bell served as a suggestion to keep everyone's fabricated memories from reverting. My name, Leader, comes from the word Leader. No, no, that doesn't mean I was anyone special. It was just that I was particularly taller than all the others. So, upon discussion, I was selected because it would be easier for me to stand out. Being so tall, people would want to come see me, you know. And so, I was given the role of revealing these secrets when the time truly called for it. Although Tasmili Village exists in reality, it was originally created as a part of a story. Let me also talk about Osohe Castle. Apparently, long ago, a kingdom existed on this island, centered around the king of Osohe. However, when we arrived on the white ship, the people of this kingdom were gone. It seems they had left the islands, fearing the dragon's eventual awakening someday. Before boarding the white ship, 
Princess Kumatora was an infant who had lost her mother and father. Upon coming to these islands, she was given to the Mad Gypsies to raise, and given the role of Princess of Osohe Castle. Wes and Duster, being her retainers, was another part of the fabricated story. Osohe Castle is one of the few and precious relics of this island's past. We crafted our story in haste, so that people inside it have very little past or history. Have you noticed that no one in Tasmania can talk about things from 100 or 1000 years ago? In truth, we had wanted to an entire plethora of myths and legends, but our story was made in such a hurry that we weren't able to. It's a real shame. I'm sure much of what I'm saying you'd rather not hear, but it's the truth. Truthfully, we had no idea how Tasmili Village would turn out, but things actually went rather well. The people who arrived on the white ship had fully taken their new identities. They believed that they had always lived together peacefully. It was when a person by the name of Porky stumbled across these islands that everything started to go amok. It seems he used a time distorter machine to travel through time and space at will. However, he was apparently shut out from all other times and spaces and tumbled into this ear and these islands. Even worse, he used his time distorter to bring many people from other eras here. The pig masks, as well as everyone in New Pork City, they were all brought here and brainwashed by Porky. This Porky fellow seems to view these islands as his own personal toy box, with which he can do anything he wants. He would take animals apart and recombine them to make creepy new chimeras. As a childlike dictator, he began doing whatever he pleased, including building Thunder Tower and forming his own army. Porky eventually learned the White Ship's secret because of a traitor among the Mad Gypsies. This traitor was Locria, the seventh Mad Gypsy, and the only one you haven't met yet. After Locria joined forces with Porky, Porky learned about the White Ship people and the secret of the Sleeping Dragon. Porky decided to pull the needles to wake the dragon so he could use the power for himself. The dragon is the power of the very earth itself, you see. It's said that whoever pulls the sealing needles will become the dragon's master. However, only a very few select are capable of pulling the dragon's needles. Apparently, neither the Mad Gypsies nor Porky have that capability. Yet the needles are being pulled now. That means Porky is somehow controlling someone who can control the dragon's power. We have to put a stop to Porky's antics. If we don't, the world will be completely destroyed again, and it will spell the true end for everything. For Porky, that might be the ultimate pleasure, but we can't allow that to happen. We, the last handful of people that are here, absolutely can't allow it to happen. Lucas, it seems you're a chosen one, with the ability to pull the needle sealing the dragon away. You must Hold the dark dragon's needle with your own hands and pass your heart onto the dragon. Let this be my one and only order to you as your leader. I hear that six of the dragon's needles have already been pulled. Deep in the earth, the dragon is likely beginning to stir from its sleep now. Supposedly, the last needle is somewhere here in New Pork City. Porky has been gathering everything that lives on these islands in New Pork City to prepare for the final needle's pulling. It's possible he's planning to hold one final twisted party, but now is our chance to change this looming crisis into a golden opportunity. All things may come to an end, or new and bountiful things may begin. Wouldn't you like to help that happen? Lucas, you were once a weak, fragile boy, but now you've been given a tremendous role to fulfill. Now that you know everything, including Everything I'm sure you'd rather not know. The time has come for you to save the future of all life as we know. God won't make you bear anything more than you can carry. I'm sure you've heard that phrase before. Know that you aren't fighting alone. Everyone, and I do mean everyone, will lend you their support. That was a long story, but that is the end of everything I have to tell you. Only the Mad Gypsies really know the Needle's locations, so I don't know where to find them. But from the way Porky and the others have been acting, I would say that they're now very close to reaching the Seventh Needle. Please, Lucas, be the one who pulls the final needle. Porky is issuing orders from the hundredth floor of the Empire Porky building. 
Start by jumping into the fray and storming the building. After that, you can start looking for clues. Jeez. It's been a long time since I've spoken to anyone. And now I'm exhausted.